Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's talk about some political science. As you've probably heard, the United Nations has begun an effort to establish a no-fly zone in Libya to deal with uh, Qaddafi's bombings of Libyan civilians, and so I wanted to take this time to explain what the likely outcome to all of this action is going to be. And to do that, we're going to look at a model of this. Now, this is going to look a little bit complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on, but once we actually see what's going on here, you'll find out that it's going to be pretty easy to solve. So. What we're looking at here is Gaddafi starts out by either surrendering to the rebels or standing firm. And if he surrenders, then the rebels can choose to punish him. That's going to entail either exile at best and probably execution at worst. And the other choice is to forgive him. And if Gaddafi stands firm, the rebels will either surrender or stand firm as well. And if they surrender, then Gaddafi can either forgive them or punish them, which will probably entail uh, execution for them in this case. If both of those sides stand firm, then we get this war outcome. Now, I've just assigned a 0.5, 0.5 probability that either side wins. It's like flipping a coin here. Really, this probability of war doesn't matter as long as both sides have some positive chance of winning. If Qaddafi wins, then he again gets the choice whether to forgive or punish them. The difference here, though, is that there's going to be some sort of cost to the war. So we're subtracting some C amount from the victory that Qaddafi gets here. The reason is that by fighting a war, it's going to cost some money for him to raise the soldiers necessary to do it. He'll lose some infrastructure. He'll miss out on some oil revenue. You get the idea. So war is going to be costly. And it's also going to be costly for the rebels up here. If the rebels win, then they can still either decide to punish or forgive Qaddafi, but regardless of that, they're going to pay some positive cost C. And again, to keep things simple, I'm going to just make C equal to 1, and that's going to make a lot of these numbers go away, and that will make this just a little bit easier to solve. And we're really not uh, missing out on anything, as long as there's positive cost to fighting and not extremely, extremely high cost to fighting, all of what I'm going to say is still going to pan out. So the way we solve this, as always, is just by doing backward induction, because this is a game of complete information. And if we start over here, we look at Qaddafi, if he surrenders, the rebels, well, not surprisingly, they're going to want to punish him. So I've made the utilities so that reflects that the uh, rebels get a two for punishing Qaddafi and a one for forgiving him. That's pretty reasonable to believe that if Qaddafi surrenders, the rebels will punish him. So that being the case, this forgive strategy doesn't happen, and so I'm just going to erase it. Uh, because we're really interested in the outcome here, not the uh, actual equilibrium set of strategies on every single path of play. So we have that taken care of. Now let's pretend that Qaddafi stands firm and the rebels surrender. Well, again, Qaddafi is going to forgive, not going to forgive, he's definitely going to punish them. Um, the utilities reflect this since he gets a 2 over a 1 here, and so we're just going to erase that forgive, and we get that. Now suppose both sides stand firm. Well, now we get this war outcome, and this looks like it's going to be pretty complicated, but let's uh, first just assume that the rebels win, so we're here. And again, we see that the rebels would want to punish over forgive. This 1 is greater than the 0, so we erase the forgive. Now let's pretend that Qaddafi wins, and we see here that Qaddafi would want to punish as well. Forgiveness just doesn't make sense, and so we erase that. Now because we know what's going to happen in each of these cases, we can just multiply these payoffs out by these probabilities. So Qaddafi, if they go to war, will uh, on average get 0.5 uh, times negative 1 plus 0.5 uh, times 1, which is going to work out to be 0, and it's of course going to be 0 for the rebels as well, because 0.5 times negative 1 plus 0.5 times 1 is also 0, so we can erase all of that and just replace it with this nice and simple 0, 0. And now we can just use very simple backward induction from here. So suppose both sides stand firm, they both get 0, 0. Well, if the rebels instead surrender, Gaddafi would punish them and the rebels would get negative 1. This negative 1 is worse than this uh, standing firm strategy for the rebels and getting 0, so the rebels would want to stand firm. And then Qaddafi can either surrender and get punished and get negative 1, or stand firm and have the rebels stand firm and get 0. This 0 is better than this negative 1. And so lo and behold, guess what happens? We get this war outcome where both sides stand firm and they end up fighting one another. So what did this tell us? Well, it's going to tell us three things. One, because the winner cannot credibly commit to not punishing the loser, peaceful settlements just aren't possible here. So 
there isn't going to be a peaceful settlement to this. One side is going to have to completely militarily defeat one another. And we see that in just about all civil wars, where the civil war continues until one side has just been completely beaten and can't fight any longer. And so what does this mean to the United States and the United Nations? Well, this is going to take a long time. It is not going to happen overnight. One state isn't, or sorry, one side of the civil conflict isn't going to defeat the other one overnight. It looked briefly as though that Qaddafi's forces would be able to uh, finish the civil war fairly quickly a couple of days ago, but now, of course, we have this no-fly zone um, inserted into the situation, and so the offensive impetus for Qaddafi has now been lost, and the no-fly zone is really going to establish a defensive mindset for both sides in this conflict and when both sides are more interested in playing defense than playing offense what you have is a really long drawn out war and so I'm not saying that the United Nations resolution and the United States' decision to impose a no-fly zone is a bad thing. It's not like I am against uh, protecting innocent civilians in Libya from being ruthlessly bombed by a dictator, but we should recognize that what we're doing in Libya right now will not be a, a, a situation where they, we're there for only three or four weeks and then we get to go out and leave because our job has been done. On the contrary, this is going to take a long time. If the Libyan rebels ever win, it's going to be on the magnitude of months or years. It's not going to be on the magnitude of days or weeks. So we should be cognizant of the fact that by setting up this no-fly zone, what essentially we're doing, if we're really serious about this, is we're committing ourselves to protecting that region for an awfully long time. And that's going to be pretty costly to us. So while I, again, am not against uh, setting up this no-fly zone, I think it's a good idea, we should just be aware of the fact that it's not going to be an easy task, and we're probably going to be there for quite some time.